Kumbhakarna was a Rakshasa and a brother of Ravan. He was a giant and had a huge body. He was a man of strong principles. King Ravan, the ruler of Lanka, was a demon with ten heads. He was so powerful that even the gods were scared of him. He abducted Ram's wife, Sita, when he was away and kept her in captivity in the city of Lanka. Ravan had two brothers, Vibhishan and Kumbhakarna. Vibhishan did not like the ways of Ravan. He left him and joined Ram. His second brother Kumbhakarna stayed with Ravan as he felt that it is his duty to protect him, though he was against his villainy. Kumbhakarna was a great warrior. He was an ardent worshipper of Brahma. One day, Om Brahma Devaya Namaha. Om Brahma Devaya Namaha. The celestial abode of Brahma. Saraswati, Kumbhakarna's meditation shakes me up. I am amazed at his power of concentration and deep meditation. My Lord, you love your devotees and shower your blessing on them without worrying about their background? Yes, I only respond to their sincerity and devotion. I accept. But Kumbhakarna is a demon. Granting him boons will harm the world. As it is, his brother Ravan is giving much trouble. Saraswati, Kumbhakarna is not like Ravan. He might be of the demonic race, but he is a person with good qualities. Well, if you have decided to give him the boon, who am I to stop it? Saraswati, his devotion to me is tremendous. I will appear before him and grant him the boon that he seeks. Saraswati made a plan. She knew that Kumbhakarna was very intelligent. She also knew well that Kumbhakarna was seeking the position of Lord Indra as he had driven Indra out of his abode. Suddenly, the wind gathered in force. The earth shook as if there was an earthquake. But Kumbhakarna did not open his eyes. Brahma appeared before him. Kumbhakarna. Kumbhakarna opened his eyes to see the radiant Brahma in his gracious form. My Lord, I am blessed by your presence. I am wonderstruck. Kumbhakarna, your prayers have brought me here. Tell me what you want. Thank you, my Lord. When Kumbhakarna started to speak, Saraswati, who was listening to the conversation, acted quickly. She created an illusion in the mind of Kumbhakarna and made him speak differently. He wanted to ask for Nirdevatam, I should be above all gods, but asked for Nidravatam, endless sleep. Great Lord, please grant me Nidravatam. Ha! I grant your wish. You will sleep for six months and a stretch. You will get up once, have food and then again go back to sleep for another six months. Brahma understood that Saraswati, his spouse and the goddess of learning had clouded Kumbhakarna's understanding and made him ask for a boon 
that would put him out of action. Thank you, my lord. From then on, Kumbhakarna would lapse into his long, long sleep. His snoring would raise a storm. No one would be able to wake him up from his deep slumber. One day, the marriage of Vibhishan was planned and it was a grand ceremony. Brother, all the arrangements have been made in a grand manner. Everything is fine, but I want Kumbhakarna to take part in my wedding. Vibhishan, it's my wish too, but who will wake him up? I will do that. Vibhishan called on his men. Soldiers, I want all of you to join together and wake up Kumbhakarna for my wedding. Huh? Kumbhakarna? Oh no! My lord, I am sorry to interrupt you, but it is highly impossible. Sir, food has to be arranged for him. More than what we arrange for our wedding. Do what I say. Don't tell what I should do. The soldiers had no choice but to obey orders. The next day, all the soldiers went to Kumbhakarna's place. Hey, can't you see some difference? Yes, I feel something dragging us. Yes, we are getting closer to Kumbhakarna. As they walked a few steps, suddenly they were tracked by a force, Kumbhakarna's breath. The soldiers were hurled to the ground and then dragged along. Oh no! They were near the foot of the giant. One of the soldiers luckily hit his leg and all others stopped. We are saved! The soldiers gasped for breath. Another group of soldiers came with bows and arrows. I am going to aim arrows at his chest. In no time, he will wake up and swallow all of you. <laughs> Four. You will soon understand what the result of your foolhardy action will be. The soldier shot a bunch of arrows on Kumbhakarna. For Kumbhakarna, the effect was like that of a few ants biting him. Still sleeping, he stretched his hand towards the arrows. In the process, the soldiers fell down here and there. Oh ha! Ah. Save me, Lord. No mistake of my royal orders. Oh, 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 oh. Suddenly, in deep slumber, the giant turned sideways. The soldiers who were standing near Kumbhakarna's feet were now trapped under him. dying oh uh, uh, please save us just then a group of soldiers came with elephants to wake him up the 
the soldiers made the elephants spray water on Kumbhakarna. This time, he has to wake up. Better be careful, else we will fall into his mouth. When the elephants sprayed water, Kumbhakarna got wild because of the disturbance. He caught hold of one of the elephants and threw it into the air. The soldier and the elephant were thrown. All the soldiers and the elephants started running. Oh no! It's good! Fly away, fly away! Why don't we bring trumpets and horns and blast them into his ears? Good idea! A huge band of trumpeteers were brought and the racket was aimed at Kumbhakarna. But nothing could move Kumbhakarna. He was like a rock, a mountain. He was irritated with the sound. With eyes closed, he caught hold of a trumpeteer and flung him away. The man flew along with the trumpet, broke open a drum and fell inside. All the soldiers started running. Nothing could move Kumbhakarna. Soldiers approached Vibhishan. My Lord, please forgive us. We tried our best, but everything failed. Vibhishan was confused but could not think of anything to awaken Kumbhakarna. Days passed. Ravan abducted Sita and kept her in Lanka. Vibhishan did not like Ravan's ways. He moved away from Ravan and joined Ram. Ram had brought the huge army of Sugreev along with Hanuman to Lanka. The Palace of Ravan Ravan was in a confused state of mind. He had lost his brave son Indrajit in the battle against Ram. His brother Vibhishan has joined Ram. Now brother Kumbhakarna was the last option. He decided to wake him up. Ministers, make arrangements to wake up Kumbhakarna. He will smash the entire monkey army in no time. My lord, that's true. But... What's that? Kumbhakarna cannot be awakened that easily. Do what you want, but wake him up. As you please, my lord. The ministers made arrangements to wake up Kumbhakarna. 
Kumbhakarna was sleeping peacefully. Given their past experience with Kumbhakarna, the soldiers were scared to go near him. They stood at a distance and blew the trumpets hard. We have tried all this many times. If we get closer, he will finish us off. There is one more solution. Tell me! He is fond of food. If we bring loads of delicious food, will the aroma not wake him up? Good idea! Loads and loads of delicious food and sweets were piled up near Kumbhakarna. The delicacies were kept piping hot. The aroma slowly made Kumbhakarna come back to his senses. He stirred. He is waking up. If we are near him, he will swallow us up in a minute. All the soldiers ran and watched Kumbhakarna from a distance. Kumbhakarna woke up and was immensely happy to see the food. He gulped down all the food, sweets, fruits and all the stuff. He threw all the vessels as if they were tiny toys. He ate his fill and started walking. The soldiers trembled with fear and ran in all possible directions. Why did you wake me up? Who had the guts to do this? One of the ministers approached Kumbhakarna. Great Lord, King Ravan wanted to meet you. That's why we woke you up. Please bear with us. Tell the king that I will meet him. The minister fled from the palace. In the meantime, Vibhishan comes to understand that Kumbhakarna has been called to fight against the monkey army. He also knew well that maximum damage will be caused to the army if Kumbhakarna steps inside the battlefield. He went to meet his brother. Kumbhakarna was walking towards the palace and was interrupted by his brother Vibhishan. Kumbhakarna, good to see you after a long time. Welcome brother, how are you? I am fine, but I find no peace of mind. Why? You are under the protection of the great Ram. Kumbhakarna, how can I be happy without you? For each is duty. You made your decision. Mine is made. I know about you well. I also know that you don't like the ways of Ravan. That's right. If we do not like the ways of the king, we should correct him. If we cannot, we should leave him. <laughs> Why do you laugh? But he is also our brother. That's true. But what can we do? 
I don't say what you have done is wrong. Kumbhakarna, I am very much bothered about you. I want you to come and join Lord Rama. Thank you very much for your kindness and concern. What have you decided? Let me come to your point. If a king makes mistakes, if we don't like, we can leave. But if the king believes me and thinks he can depend on me in times of trouble, how can I betray him? Ravan has looked after me all these years. I belong to him. I may disagree with him, but I will fight for him. I am ready to die for him. Brother, I know Ram is a noble personality. You will be safe with him. Please permit me to be with Ravan and fight for him. Kumbhakarna reached the palace. The people trembled with fear seeing the giant. Kumbhakarna entered the palace of Ravan. Welcome, my dear brother. I am immensely happy to see you. Brother, why are your eyes red? Indrajit is no more. Kumbhakarna was shocked. He stood like a stone. His whole body shivered. Kumbhakarna, I want you to teach a lesson to the monkey troops and to Ram. As you please, brother. Kumbhakarna, are you all right? Are you not happy being with me? Brother, how can you think of me like this? Kumbhakarna, don't mistake me. As Vibhishan left me, I thought even you may not be interested in staying with me. Dear brother, you have been my guardian and king. People shudder at my size and strength. These belong to you. Ravan looked at him in surprise. Brother, I don't agree with your ways. I told you so earlier. These unlawful ways may lead us into dire trouble. Anyhow, I am ready to face the war. I might win or might die. If I die, please mend your ways and rule Lanka forever. Ravan hugged his brother Kumbhakarna. Even if I die in the war, I will not be worried as I have the greatest blessing in life in the person of Kumbhakarna. Kumbhakarna left for the battlefield. As he stepped in, the whole field was covered with dust. The monkey army was stunned to see the huge demon Kumbhakarna. Kumbhakarna grabbed elephants and swung them in the air like a wheel. The elephants and horses ran in haste, seeing Kumbhakarna. Lord Ram appeared before him. Kumbhakarna stood before Ram.
Lord Ra, I know that you are a symbol of righteousness. You are the noblest man in the entire universe. Kumbhakarna, I know that you are blessed by Brahma and you abide by righteousness. But why did you come to fight for Adharma? Lord Ra, you are a great human being. I am an ordinary man. I know my brother Ravan has chosen the wrong path, but I have to stand by him and show my gratitude to him for looking after me all these years. Kumbhakarna, I appreciate your love for your brother, but you could have avoided this war by convincing your brother and heading for a compromise. Kumbhakarna smiled. Why do you smile? My lord, you hail from a true Kshatriya family, the great son of the great Ishwaku dynasty. After losing everyone in our family, if we go in for a compromise, we will be taken to be wild cowards. Let me face the war. Ram appreciated Kumbhakarna's stand. The battle was on. Kumbhakarna wreaked havoc. Ram then severed Kumbhakarna's hand that was holding the sword. Kumbhakarna did not waste a moment. He grabbed his severed right hand with his left. He used the severed hand as a formidable mace and started hitting and crushing the monkey out. The entire army was afraid of the hand that was cut as in the earth, rather than the hand that was still intact. Then Ram cut his left hand too. Kumbhakarna used both his legs and trampled over the army, grinding them to nothing more than lumps on the ground. Now, one leg was removed by another arrow. Kumbhakarna did not stop. With the single remaining leg, he jumped hither and thither, still causing untold damage. Ram cut the second leg too making him fall on the ground. Kumbhakarna did not give up even then. He turned his face to the sides. Picked up massive rocks with his teeth and holding them there. He used his tongue like a catapult to flip them into the air. Finally, Ram aimed an arrow at Kumbhakarna's chest. That did it. Kumbhakarna closed his eyes slowly. Ram hurried towards the dying Kumbhakarna. Lord Ra, I am happy to die at your hands. Kumbhakarna closed his eyes. Ravan was shocked to hear the news of his brother's death. For the first time in his life, he wept as he has not wept even for his son, Indrajit.
Kumbhakarna, though a demon, was a person of great penance. That's why he was blessed by Lord Brahma. Again, he believed in righteousness and dissuaded Ravan from keeping Sita in captivity. But once he knew that Ravan would not listen to his good advice, he decided to stand by him and fight for him. He had two ways before him, to stand by righteousness or to show his gratitude to his brother. The latter option meant death, but he chose to die with his brother and made the supreme sacrifice, a great hero.